So you don't know how much time do you need to ferment your bread. Maybe on the same day, maybe on the next day, or even two days. Stay watching this video and I'll show you how to do it. Hi, I am Gluta Morgan and remember that I am here to help you bake every day better at home. Today we'll be talking about fermentation. Yes, but before we start fermenting, why don't we start baking? Here's the recipe of the bread that we are going to make today. Remember that you can upload this recipe into my app, Gluten Morgan Baker's Percentage. It's totally free and you can download it from the app market of your Android or iPhone phone. So let's start with the bread. As usual, I'll be making an autolyze, which means that we'll be mixing or stirring all the ingredients but the salt. So in the bowl, we go with the flour. In this case, I have strong flour, strong wheat flour, but you could use some bread flour, it's okay. Next ingredient, semolina flour, or just the same flour as before. And now it's time for the sourdough starter. Remember that it has to be very, very active. If it's not active, please don't start kneading. Give it some food and love and let it rise and then it will be ready to be used. And last ingredient by the moment, water. We'll be adding it very slowly and mixing. We are not kneading, just mixing. We are trying to get all the flour wet. Looking good. I stir a little bit more and that's all, we're done. It's been an hour, an hour though has been doing autolyze all this time. So let's check how it is now. At first sight, it looks like it's almost the same dough as before. But now, check this out. I start stretching it and yes, what you're looking now is the gluten network. That's the magic of the gluten. So if you've paid attention so far, you might have noticed that I haven't added the salt. So now it's time to add the salt to the dough and start kneading the already kneaded dough. <laughs> Okay, I think that that's enough by the moment. So the dough is already kneaded. We have used all our ingredients, including our sourdough starter, which means that this dough is about to ferment. Yes, to rise, to double in size, triple in size. So what do we have to do now? We have to let it rise, as I told you before. And the secret is to do it at room temperature, but which room temperature is the correct one? Let's check it. Okay, around 24, 23, 25, that's a good temperature. The Fahrenheit is around 77 degrees. So how long will this take? It depends on a few things. First of all, the activity of your sourdough starter. That is key, very important. And the second, the temperature. But maybe mm, some around four hours will be okay. This first fermentation is also known as bulk fermentation. Why is bulk? Because in this bowl, I should have, not today, I just have one bread, but I could have more than one bread. That's why it's a bulk fermentation. We have a lot of dough and a lot of future bread. And another thing that we have to do during this bulk fermentation, which should be done at the first third time of this process, is some stretching and folding. This will help the gluten develop to get even better. Remember, always before starting to stretch and fold, wet your hands. So we stretch the dough, not tearing it apart, and we fold it into itself. It is easy in a bowl because we only have four folds to make. The secret and why are we doing this at the first third part of the fermentation is because we don't want to degas. That gas is going to be the cramp. If we do it later on the first fermentation, on the bulk fermentation, we'll have a more dense cramp. I am doing the stretch and folding just once today, but maybe your dough may ask a few more stretching and folding. But today we are talking about fermentation. That you could see in many other videos here in my channel. Today we are just talking about fermentation. By the magic of gluten, it's been four hours and the dough is already fermented. Look, it has doubled in size or maybe tripled in size and it's beautiful, all full of air. 
all these bubbles are going to be the crumb of our bread. So let's check the temperature. It has been here at room temperature all this time. So let me check it. Yes, 25 degrees, that's 77, 75 Fahrenheit too, and it's okay, right temperature. So what's next? Now it's time to shape this bread. I could also continue this bulk fermentation in my fridge. That is a cold and long fermentation, but not today. Let's continue with the experiment. Time to shape the bread. All right, bread shape. And now comes the moment that I've been waiting for. And this is the key, the moment of the experiment of all this whole video, the fermentation. So now the experiment will be divided into three parts. The first one is going to be this first bread, the one that we did at room temperature, and we'll be baking it and see what happens. Then I have already fermenting in my fridge, that's a cold fermentation, a bread which I did 24 hours ago. This bread has been in the fridge for 24 hours. And I also have another one that I did it two days before, 48 hours. And this one has been in the fridge for two days, 48 hours. So now comes the epic moment. In we are going to bake these three breads, the room temperature, the 24 hours cold fermentation, the 48 cold fermentation too and see which are the difference. I used to bake my breads always with 24 hours cold fermentation. Many bakers do the same thing because it is supposed to enhance the flavors and the structure and the crust of the bread. So that is what I want to check. If it's true, if it is worth it to wait 24 hours or maybe 48 hours or maybe just baking your bread on the same day. So why don't we start baking? So just one thing before we start baking. We need to wait for this room temperature bread to be ready to go into the oven. Okay, time to check if the bread is ready to go into the oven. One thing when we are baking bread at room temperature is to check, to make this poking. And when it comes back slowly, takes a sec approximately, that means that the bread is ready. So. Let's start this experiment. Here are the three breads. The first one, which was already done at room temperature. Here's the 24 hours in the fridge and the 48 hours in the fridge cold fermenting. So let's check the temperature of each one. The first one, the room temperature is around 70, 77 Fahrenheit, more or less. Now let's check the 24 hours cold fermenting bread. It is much colder, around 40, 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And now let's check the third one, the 48 hours. Same temperature, 40, 41 degrees Fahrenheit. And another thing that I want you to see is a difference in volume. The first one, the room temperature bread, looks a little bit bigger, but it's not. The three breads weigh the same weight, which is one kilogram. But the difference between the cold fermentation breads and the room temperature bread is that the gases inside these two breads, the cold ones, they have compressed. So that's why they look smaller and this one looks bigger. Now it's time to bake them and continue with this experiment. Are you lost with all the sourdough bread recipes that you find on the internet? Would you like to learn all the tips and tricks to make your own sourdough bread at home? Then I have the solution. I have designed the perfect masterclass of sourdough bread just made for you. By clicking the link on the description, you will learn how to make and take care of your sourdough starter, how to knead, shape, ferment, and bake your sourdough bread, how to use and read the baker's percentage, all the basic techniques to bake like a pro at home, and how to read and understand your dough. Don't miss out on it 
and click the link on the description right now. Okay, it's time to bake. So inside my oven, I have three different Dutch ovens preheated at 488 degrees Fahrenheit. Time to go with the first one. Room temperature. Let's go with the second one, the 24 hour bread. And let's go with the last one, 48 hours. Now we only have to wait 20 minutes and we'll take out the lid. Time to remove the lid. Room temperature. Whoa. Wow, Whoa. 24 hours. Woohoo! Now the last one, 48 hours. Wow. Bye bye. Baking ready, let's take them out. Oh, they look beautiful. Check this out, wow. I want you to hear the sound. Hi, baking ready. The three breads are here. The room temperature one, 24 hours, and the 48 hours. They almost look the same, but there are very subtle differences. So let's check them. At first sight, what we see is the opening of the year. The oven spring was better here and even better on the 48 hours. For 24 hours, okay, but this is normal. This happens all the time when you bake a bread on the same day. That's why, or one of the reasons why, we cold ferment the bread of the shape is because when you cut it, you make a, a very, a better cut and the, and the bread opens better or bigger. The ear is bigger when you can do this perfect cut in cold fermentation. When you do it in a, in a dough which is at room temperature, the cut that you do, the, the scoring that you do is not the best. That's the, the thing, but it's okay. This bread is light, it's well baked, well fermented. And the color, another thing that I see, it is not that dark as this one. These are golden brown, like caramel. This one is golden too, but not as much as this too, but it's, it seems to be perfect bread. And it's a little bit <laughs> hot. Now let's move on to the 24 hours. And here we have the 48 hours. What we see is a beautiful ear, nice scoring, nice, not a good, a good uh, autumn spring too. It is light, it sounds okay. That means it's well baked and the first thing that we notice are these blisters. All these blisters are produce of cold fermentation, which are totally different, but this one. Here are no blisters on the room temperature, and on the 24 hours, we start seeing some blisters. Beautiful bread. And a little bit hot. <laughs> okay, time to move to the third one, the last one, 48 hours, and that's a lot. You cannot always achieve 48 hours fermentation. It depends a little bit on the kind of flour that, you, that you're using. I've been using this a strong flour and also the temperature. You've seen that, that this cold fermentation was done in a very low temperature. And what I first see more than this ear, this, this ear is, is a little bit bigger, a little bit more open. What it's calling me are these blisters. We have much more blisters than in 24 hours. Check out in 48 hours. It's full of blisters. That means a long, long, long cold fermentation process. And it's beautiful too. Light, sounds okay. So what we still need to check is the crumb. But since they are really hot 
And it's not the best moment to cut a, and open a bread when it's hot because the crumb is not yet gelatinized. So what I would like to do, and since this is a video and video editing can do magic, why don't we let them cool down and we cut them tomorrow morning. Gluten Morgan, everyone, as I told you, the addition makes magic. So now all the breads have cooled down and I am ready to slice them and of course taste them. All right, let's go first with the room temperature bread. Okay, but before I say something about the crumb, let's open the other two. Now it's the turn of the 24 hours cold fermentation. Let's open the last one. And this one is a 48 hours cold fermentation. So here we have the three breads already open and cooled down. At first sight, what we see is, is that there are two buns. The side of the room temperature ones and here we have the cold fermented ones. So what we see on this one at room temperature is a crumb which is not too dense but it's perfectly fermented but it's not an open crumb. Maybe you're fond of this kind of regular crumbs. This, these are ideal for sandwiches. When you use an open crumb, you can maybe get all your hand wet with some jam, marmalade, butter, or even olive oil. Now we move to the second side, the cold fermentation ones. The first thing you see is the crumb is totally different. This is an open crumb, total irregular, full of air pockets, smaller and bigger ones. That's good. That was not so good a long time ago in French cuisine and French bakery, but now I think it's my kind of crumb. I like to have this airy crumb. I know you can get your hand all dirty, but it's okay. So the difference between the 24 and the 48 hours, the crumb seems almost the same. What it might have changed maybe is the taste. Maybe this one should be a little bit more acid because it has been one more day fermenting in the fridge. Let's try the room temperature one. I like this regular crumb. It is airy, it is moist, and it's very tender and soft. Okay, I gotta try this one. I really like this bread. It's okay, even though I did it just in a few hours, but it's a good bread. Moist, they are very creamy, the crumb is super creamy, but the taste is light. Light, it's excellent, I think, for toast or a sandwich. Now it's time for the 24-hour bread. Okay, I'm really liking this kind of crumb. It is a little bit more soft and tender because it's full of air and the air pockets are bigger. I think it's because of that. And it's really moist, even moister than the first one. And a little bit colder. Okay, let's try it. Mm -hmm. It is really interesting how different the chewing is between this one and the first one. It is easier to eat this one, to chew it is, it is even moister than the first one and also the taste. The taste, now I see some little notes of acidity, but it's okay, it's not too acid. I always work with my sourdough starter, low in acidity because too much acid on a dough, it's not good for the gluten network. So that's what I usually do. I'm more used to this kind of bread. It is really tasty. The crumb is super creamy and humid. I'm loving this one, but I need to try the third one. And the last bread of the day, the 48 hours cold fermentation. Oh! <laughs> As before, the crumb is so moist and so tender. It is very, very fluffy. I'm liking this. And the crumb is thin, and the crust is also very thin, and that's another thing that I like a lot. So let's try it and see what it happens. Mm. Mm. 
So here I'm noticing something that I thought that it was going to happen. Acidity. It is a little bit more acidic as this, the second one, the 24 hours. It's okay, it's not too acid. Remember I said that I use a low acid sourdough starter, so it's okay. Maybe if you're a fan of this acidic, more, more French kind of bread, this could be your kind of bread. The crumb is creamy, soft and tender. It's okay, just a little bit of acidity. So this is the end of this incredible experiment that I always wanted to do, but I never did it till today. I always did bread on the same day. I also did 24 hours cold fermentation bread too, and even 48 and also 96, but not at the same day. So I think it's a, an interesting experiment and we discover a lot of things. For example, on this one, on the bread done on the same day at room temperature, what we found is that we can make an excellent bread, not too strong in, in taste, the, the, the crumb is okay, it's a little bit more regular, no big pockets, but it's a perfect bread to be done on the first day. Maybe if you are starting now with sourdough starter, maybe this could be your kind of bread with no long fermentations, cold fermentations. It is easy, you can do it on the same day, so it's perfect bread for you. Now, my favorite, 24 hours bread. This is the one that I always do here at my lab. It's a perfect balance between acidity, open crumb, nice crust, and nice ear. It is beautiful from the outside or from the inside. The taste is okay, not too acid. Remember that I use always low acidic sourdough starter. So this is my kind of bread. And that now we move to the third one, to the 48 hour uh, long fermentation which is not too acid. Okay, don't worry, it's not that acid. You can eat this bread perfectly, but maybe it's a little bit more French style of bread. They like more acid kind of bread. So that's all for today. I hope I have helped you somehow with your daily baking. And as always, remember to leave me some comments. Tell me how much hours do you ferment your bread? Maybe even more than 48 hours or less. And please give me a like. Share it and I'll see you on the next video. I hope you have enjoyed this video. And if you want to learn more about sourdough bread and sourdough starter, I encourage you to check the link on the description. And remember, this masterclass was specially designed for you.